Welcome to Vessel Coworking. My name is Sarah Coker. I'm the captain of this ship and I make a lot of boat jokes about Vessel. Um, we're so glad that you're all here. We're so glad that this panel is here. Anyone that has read anything um, on social media about what this event is, unless you just wandered into the building, you know that this is a stacked lineup of people that are in media and public relations and publicity, all of those things about getting things out there that's these people. I'm gonna let them go down the row and introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what they do. And then we'll get into some questions, frequently asked questions that they get, that they sent me. Um, let them talk about some of those things and then we'll turn it over to y'all. So just to give you a little bit of backstory about what Vessel is, if some of you again have just wandered into our building today. Um, Vessel is a co-working space. Co-working is an alternative to working from home or coffee shops. So um, we're gonna shut the music off. Is that what you're doing sign language to shut the music off? Let's do that. <laughs> um, oh, thanks, Clarissa. She's a vessler, she knows. Um, co-working is an alternative to sitting on your couch in your pajamas. It's a, it's a way to make you brush your teeth. Um, there's networking opportunities. You can rent desks by the day, by the month. You can dedicate a desk and leave a monitor here, or you can pop in a few times a month whenever you have time. Um, there's more information on the flyers outside, and also we have an internet website that y'all can go to. So, another thing we do here at Vessel besides working and having a room full of people that are doing all different kinds of work is about once a month we have a workshop like this where Vesslers that are experts or leaders in their field or have interesting ideas will get up and share about them. So this is, I think, the fifth workshop that we've done. And this one's especially cool because Clarissa, who does this type of thing, <laughs> is connected to all these wonderful people and said, I can get my cool friends to come. Uh, well, <laughs> well, thank you guys for coming out and joining and sharing your knowledge. When Sarah presented and asked, hey, would you teach something? I wasn't sure, but I know that the most frequently asked question I get is, what do we send the media and when and how? And so I just thought that would be really pertinent for nonprofits, small business owners, or anybody that has a story that they think they should share. So on this panel, we have a mix of journalists and PR professionals who can help answer those questions for you guys. So please share if you have any burning you know, projects that you, that you, and you just wanna know how to go about that, and know, wanna know the etiquette and, and maybe like a timeline or no. That's the exciting part is when we do turn it over. Raise your hand if you've been to a Vessel workshop before. Okay, I see hands, great. Um, these things are very relaxed and we want to give as much time to the audience for y'all to be able to ask questions and apply it to your own businesses and your own work. That's the point of these things. Um, we're gonna try and keep it to an hour-ish and then probably go over like a few minutes, but if we shoot for an hour, we'll land at the moon or whatever that phrase is. Um, so without further ado, let's go down. We'll start with you and just tell us uh, your name and what you do. All right. Hi, I'm Danielle Urban. I'm a senior account executive at Pierpont Communications. Um, we do primarily media relations and uh, communications planning. My job specifically with media is to make our clients thought leaders in their industry using media relations. Uh, I'm Omar Gayaga. I write for the Austin American Statesman um, and I do some stuff with KUT. Uh, my job primarily is to delete most of your emails. A lot of emails, Tali. Uh, and uh, and I also co-host a show called Statesman Shots uh, with this lady here. Uh, and uh, we've actually got flyers that you know tell you how to find it and download it and put it in your car and all that. Um, I'm Tali Mosley, and I'm realizing that I've worked with just about everyone on this panel. You're my co-host. So you're in the middle. You are my editor. You're my, I'm your copywriter. Oh my God. And uh, Clarissa, you and I have worked together. On a story, yeah. On, on a story together. Animal. So um, anyway, I'm a freelancer. Um, and I'm also the co-host of Safe Moon Shots with Omar Gayaga. Did I say my name? Personal. Also, relatively new, not exactly a new mom. Anyway, I just love Congratulations! <laughs> it's not really new. She's 18 months old. So I just still keep using that excuse to, if I like seem like tired or out, and I'm like, I have a baby. You can really stop it. Anyway. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I'm Sarah Thurman, and I'm the executive editor at Austin Monthly Magazine. 
and I edit, um, I kind of oversee the front section of the magazine, um, A-list. I also do like things I've learned, which is our back page. We also do characters. I like to call that the people keeping Austin weird. But I don't, you know, I don't go to them saying, hey, you're a person that's keeping Austin weird. I say, you have a really unique hobby. We would love to spotlight you in the magazine. Um, yeah, so that's kind of what I do. Um, my name's Rebecca Epstein, and I own a company called 15 Media, and what I do is a little bit unique. I work actually with other PR firms to help them pitch, do more pitching for their clients. So all day, every day, all I do is pitch, all I do is reach out to the media, and that's, yeah, literally all I do. Pretty awesome. Uh, my name is Clarissa uh, Ramirez. I am a vessler, um, journalist by trade, and I own my own company called Small Coffee, where I do primarily social media, but I also do um, PR and content strategy for small businesses um, in Texas. So, nice to meet you guys. Wonderful. So, they have all, most of them sent me some questions that they get asked a ton, and we'll probably be able to get through a few of them um, before we turn it over. One that stood out to me was kind of like the mecca of what I'm sure every beginning email is. This one's for Rebecca. Um, every first email that she gets from someone who has no idea what they're doing probably has these types of questions in it. How do you know you're ready for the press? How do you contact the press? Do you need a PR firm? Can I just call the statesman and go, hello, I'd like the front page. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, do you want to take that? And then y'all chime in as you feel. Um, if you have something else to answer, but that was a question that Rebecca, you get a lot. Yes, all of those questions. Okay, uh, I'll try to keep it brief. Um, do you know you're ready for PR? I would say there's usually two things that I like to, you know, see when a small business is looking for PR. Is one, if you look bigger than you are, and what I mean by that is that you just have some type of functioning, professional-looking <laughs> website. It doesn't look like you made it in your basement. Because I have seen people that have, you know, websites that literally look like they're from like. 1999, and it doesn't cost that much to you know get Squarespace or something to just make yourself look professional, even if it's only you. Um, and the second thing is also, especially if you're a consumer-based brand, to make sure you can fulfill orders. Um, that's another big thing is if you don't have a system going down where you, if you get an article and then you have lots of people wanting to buy your product, if you can't fulfill those orders, then that's a problem because that's your first impression with consumers. And so you want to make sure that before you're going after press, you at least have some type of system down knowing that you can fulfill those orders. So I guess those are the two things that I think are important before you go after press. And then, wait, now I forgot what the second question was. The second one was, um, so that's how you know you're ready. Yeah. Then how do you even contact the media and do you need a PR firm to help bridge that gap? I say, okay, you know, without PR firms, I would have <laughs> no job. But the thing is, PR isn't rocket science and anyone can do their own PR. It's really true. It's just a matter of if you want to spend the time to do it. Um, you know, if you're going to do your own PR and at sometimes, you know, a small business or a startup, they just don't have the money to hire a PR firm, um, you should just honestly spend some time looking up templates. There's templates for press releases online, there's templates for pitches online, and a lot of times people's contact information is on the website, or if you find the format of one person's email, um, you can kind of assume what other people's emails are. But that being said, kind of what Sarah and I were talking about earlier is that it's good to have a PR firm because as a business owner, you can sometimes get overly excited about your product and that can sometimes be detrimental. You know, you think you belong like on the front page of the statesman, but maybe you're not quite there yet or you think your product's the coolest thing ever and I'm sure it is, but a PR person will a little, be able to kind of look at it in a more, um, you know, third objective. objective. Yeah. yeah. So it's if you have the money, definitely hire a PR firm, but if you don't, you can still do it yourself, but you just want to be careful. That's a good question. I mean, that's a good answer. It's a great question, too. <laughs> um, Danielle said she got this question a lot. How do I get media to want to cover me? Yes, and this is kind of tagging on to what you said, but um, a lot of people have either, it seems like one or two impressions, impressions of media, and it's either that 
they are these big scary things and they have no idea how to approach them or they are a dumping ground for my content and I can send them ideas, you know, I just need to send them, give them, turn out my content. And as you'll see, look, they're human beings who have jobs <laughs> and, and they have a story, they have a job too, they have a, a story that they have to file. And so what we always recommend to our clients is if you want to be more appealing to media, then start thinking about how you can help them and be a resource to mm -hmm. them. They don't want to see just your random press release. They want to know how you can directly contribute either in um, a form of expertise, uh, to comment on a trend, do you have data that's relevant to what they cover? Um, I mean, really, how can you be a resource to them? I mean, journalism is one of the hardest jobs in communications right now. And they have, and the more resource, especially multimedia, anything that you can provide them that's valuable to what they cover, that's important, what they cover. Um, I mean, it just, it just, it's really helpful. There's a lot of people who just really don't really take the time to think that through. And that's something that you don't need a PR firm to think through. Um, and so a lot of times we'll just, when we're starting relationships, we'll just kind of reach out and be like, is this shit? I mean, do we, is this, if this is a complete waste of your time, would you just tell, like, don't delete my email, really, like, tell me really quickly, and they'll tell you, and, and exactly you learn what's you. valuable, and you start building those relationships, and then it kind of comes organically, because again, the focus is on building the relationship and being a value and not pushing your idea on other people. When I see the subject line, is this shit, I'm like, well, <laughs> I know. Open that. I'm glad that this is getting out there. When we did, in September, we did a, a how to tell your story, like how to tell your brand story. And for about an hour, the guy leading it stood up here and was like, no one cares if you don't care. Stop trying to sell something that essentially is just shit. Don't. Yeah. It's not like... No one wants to read, no one wants to see a PowerPoint deck that's like 50 things long yeah. that you wouldn't even want to look at. But, but I think some of it is timing, too. I yeah. think sometimes, you're, to the point of wh whether your thing is ready for the media or not, a Kickstarter is not news. Mm -hmm. your yeah. kick, no matter how great your Kickstarter is or how awesome it's going to be two years from now, uh, that's not news, mm -hmm. and we won't cover it as news. Uh, if a <laughs> Richard Garriott or somebody who's a notable person launches a Kickstar Kickstarter, Maybe that's a little bit of news, uh, but even that, you're telling people, mostly with a Kickstarter, yeah. hey, a year from now, this thing's going to be out that you might be able to buy if you're not a backer. And you know, my readers, who are primarily, who are typically 55 and up, are like, where can I go out and buy this right now? And you're like, oh, it's a Kickstarter seat because a year from now, <laughs> yeah. it, it might be a thing. What's Kickstarter? And that's not news. <laughs> yeah. it's, that it's, is the next question. And I mean, I come around on that. Like, I have there's people in the newsroom that straight up, if it's a fun, if it's crowdfunded or a Kickstarter, even if it's a movie with celebrities and everything, they'll be like, no, that's not news. I'm not going to cover it. Yeah. Uh, same goes for self-published books. They will tell you say that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have people in the newsroom that are very hardcore about with those rules because that filters things out for them. They're like. If I draw that line in the sand, then I don't have to deal with all these people doing those things. I'm a, I'm a little bit less um, hardline about it. I think there are some things that are Kickstarters that rise to the level of news, but it has to really. It's like if it's a record breaker. It right? has to be something that's yeah. like, two million dollars in one week on Kickstarter. Then it's like okay. In, and local okay. and local for me yeah. is is a big thing. Yeah. It has to be local. And if it's something where it's already at the prototype stage, it's already something I can touch and feel and go, okay, this is a real thing that actually exists in the world that's more likely to get my attention than a, oh, a year from now, we're gonna launch a thing, and maybe, and somewhat. To Don't end your sentences with and somewhat. To what, <laughs> yes. what she was saying, um, there's an expression that we always use, it's the so what. You know, we get the email, and I'll use salons. You know, Austin has 10,000 salons. And um, we get a lot of the new ones coming, hey, we opened the salon, and we're always like, so what? Another one opened last week. Did they Why? Cry? Like, you know, so it's kind of like we're always like, please help us out and help us know why your salon needs coverage. Like, what is special about it? Oh, you only work in like, I don't know, what would be a weird well, salon? Well, I, I was going to say, like, the blowout the blow salons. Yeah, 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 the blowout blow salons. Yeah. Another thing, sometimes also we do, like, you know, hold on to these press releases because it might become a trend where yeah. it's like, oh, another one just opened. That's the blowout. Oh, so apparently blowouts are hot. And, you know, yeah. so we may not, like, do anything right away, but it's always, every time I open an email, I'm always like, is it Austin based? And what's the so what? Are you answering why this is important? Is it a time thing? Timeliness yeah. is always great. 
But um, yeah, if you can help us out in answering why we should be doing something, other than the fact that your place is really amazing, it's like, it's great, but what are you doing that's different from every yeah. other salon in town? Yeah. Let us know. I'm going to get a ton of salon here. <laughs> <laughs> like, great. Please. Just open up. This is actually, they're all salon owners. <laughs> <laughs> okay. uh, awesome. Really good. It can seem rough and like yeah. some tough love, but that's that's why I say a plus of engaging or at least going to coffee. You could always email me and we can go to coffee about you know of what of specifically talking about your business. But we get brought in a lot of times to kind of give the tough love of. I mean, Austin is a very successful, talented, sophisticated market, and unfortunately, that means when it comes to media coverage, your event, your new salon, your business, your Kickstarter, your. Um, I'm trying to think of some other things. I mean, your conference are just not news because we're all out here doing great things and um, there's a lot more to compete with. Yeah. Sarah, this kind of goes on um, with what y'all were just saying about if it's record breaking or if it's a, such a niche thing that you know people would be interested in it, even if it's a year away. That's one thing, but how? one question you get is how far in advance do yeah you need to know about an event or an upcoming yeah. thing? For us, it being general? magazine, um, and I think actually this is for every print or radio even, advance notice is key. I had a woman pitch something for August 2016, and I was like, thank you. <laughs> that helps so much for us to schedule out what we're going to do. And it's amazing how many press releases we get where it's like, there's this amazing event going on. It's next week. And I'm like, we can't do anything yeah. with that. It can go on our website, the calendar, but you know, and we have other stories that we're planning out for next week. So it's kind of like, um, we ask that if you have an event or something's going on six to eight weeks at least, even further would be great. Um, a lot of times people want us to do like features on stuff. Well, you can't pitch that a month. You know, if something's happening a month from today, it's not going to make it. You know, you need to let us know at least three to four months in advance for features. And yeah, it's just um, the more advance notice, the better. This, I'm going to go to Omar's question. I like Omar's uh, question. Because <laughs> I like to speculate on what I think the right answer is. Um, one thing he gets asked a lot is, do you prefer <laughs> do you prefer email, phone, social media, or snail mail for pitches? Okay, one of them's not one of them. Email, no. Because you would just delete no. it, right? No, I, I like email. <laughs> I'm fine with email. I'm not fine with like 15 megabit, megabyte attachments. Yeah. Uh, we, we have a, we're yeah. an, we have an ancient email server. Uh, that's run by hamsters on wheels, and it. Uh, we have a quota of like one gigabyte of email, and like I, I reached that a long time ago, so I'm deleting stuff constantly. Uh, and they're about to upgrade us, which fingers crossed. Uh, but yeah, like unsolicited emails with huge attachments, like I'm going to delete those typically. Um, no, I, li I like email. It, I mean, I keep a lot of emails, uh, and to go back to the point of timing. Like play the long game. Like mm -hmm. get to know me. Like pitch me stuff. If I don't like it right now, it might be something I can use three months from now. Mm -hmm. uh, it might be something that becomes a trend uh, later on. So I, I, any email that I think is interesting, or that I might come back to later, I will keep it. I'll file it somewhere and search for it later. Uh, so don't, you know, just because I didn't respond right away, or uh, if I said no on this right now, that doesn't mean I won't come back to it later. That's like that's what I was about to say. That is a theme that I've been thinking about as everyone's been answering is. How many people in here are publicists or are in the pitch position of like okay. needing to pitch something? <laughs> yeah, okay. So, um, and how many people just represent a business and like want to get the word out somehow? Okay, so knowledge of your target, I think, could be the answer for several of these questions. And that is like playing the long game, developing a relationship. And so outside of needing to pitch something, just like following Omar on Twitter and engaging with him a little bit, maybe friending him on Facebook and like getting to know that person so that when you reach out, it's like this is someone, this is an acquaintance. It's not just like, hi media person. I, I, I used to be a publicist, so like I know how intimidating it is to just reach out to someone and you know, cross my fingers that they wouldn't delete my emails. <laughs> so, but if you've interacted with them a bit on social media and it's like, played around with them, like, I always come back to this publicist and how many minutes you take in I think she's just, like, the just genius at this, of getting to know journalists outside of needing to pitch them things. 
And so even when Jate sends us this like, you know, kind of a whatever pitch, like it's Jate. So like we'll at least like open it and read it and think about it and you know, we like her, so we want to help her out. So I think playing the long game and knowledge of your target is a really good idea. And also, you know, Sarah comes from a lifestyle publication and Danielle, your I don't know what your clients are, but it sounds like they're a probably different category than mm -hmm. lifestyle. So just like pitching the right people. So not just like downloading features from a media database at the Statesman and pitching all features. Uh -huh. But like yeah, or gearing it, gearing it gearing toward it. the publication. Like, okay, they may not be interested in this, but there's this angle you can also take. And that's kind of answering that so what question. Yeah. Like, why would we do this? Well, right. Because I think that the person that started this company is really, you know, doing great things and has yeah. this really interesting backstory, you know. Right, like, or I saw you guys just wrote a story on yeah. this awesome dog salon. Well, yeah. guess what? I've got a cat salon, and <laughs> like, I want to tell you about it, you know. So, like, the, um, it, ta it takes more time to target. Like, I, in, in, in PR, I feel like it's, like, always kind of a mix of, like, blanket announcement and, like, fine-tuned targeting, but... On the other side of it, I can definitely say for sure that things that are like a little bit more personal and demonstrate a little bit more knowledge and have a relationship outside of just our email conversation are usually more successful. Yeah. I'd like to add on to that. Um, having worked with some small business owners, I think that like sometimes you know the fear is okay. Like, is it worth this time to hire a publicist? But one understanding is knowing that it's a long game because of the relationships. You can't just hire someone for a month and be like, okay, where's the magic? Where is that yeah. gonna happen? Um, and the reason is because you were saying about like, maybe this is not a good time right now, but follow up with me three months, six months down the line. And I have seen those turn into stories because once the editor is planning those seeds in your mind, like, well, actually we are done with that section, but we're gonna be, doing something on summer, you know, I don't know, like summer furniture, so just keep me in mind. And so it's, um, one, the relationships, but two, also for anybody that owns small, uh, works with businesses, one thing I used to see on the journalism end a lot that kind of irked me, um, besides getting like mass blasts that are just like, don't say, you know, that aren't, they're just kind of sent to everybody, which I always think is kind of tacky because it's, one, it's kind of lazy, and two, it's very presumptuous. Um, that we would, you know, like you're saying, like take that time to tailor it. But the other thing too is sending things that are that are authentic and don't sound too polished. And what I mean by that is sometimes, like, you know, as a publicist or, or sorry, as a as a journalist, you're you want to have a quote that's real. You don't want it to sound like an ad campaign. You don't want it to sound like you're just publishing a release. So sometimes, like publicists will, like their marketing team comes up with something like, "This is our message." but they're not giving access to like, what, well, what's that unique quote that we can have that shows that person's real or you can identify with it. So it's not just like, Oh my God, and I so am, am, people that work in media are so hyper tuned to marketing ease, yeah. marketing yeah. speak, like really you can just see it from a mile away. And so, yeah, don't have your marketing person reach out to media. Like yeah. they will talk in weird words. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. They will say weird things. We had, yes. I had this thread on Facebook yesterday because of the, um, the t do you guys read the Tinder thing that happened? Oh yeah. The CEO of Tinder did an interview with uh, International Standard or somebody. Yeah. Oh. And he yeah. said he, he was bad interview. <laughs> like if the word sodomy comes up in an interview, like you. You've taken a bad turn. <laughs> um, so, like, he, he, he gave a terrible interview. I don't know where the, the PR person was apparently in the room and uh, let it happen. Uh -huh. uh, so, and that, and so I started a thread on Facebook for because I had a lot of PR people and journalists. Are, I, I'm friends with on Facebook about like what companies have CEOs that should never talk to the media. <laughs> and it's like Uber and yeah. Whole Foods. Yes, and, right. Uh, and like, okay. like that's something seriously. If you're if you represent a company or uh, like. Keep your CEO yeah. in check because that can ruin yeah. your whole business. Yeah. Like if they're not good with the media, don't have them talk to the media. Have a marketing person talk to the media or somebody else in the company. Uh, sometimes the CEOs are driven and smart and talented, but not good communicators. I find that a lot with, especially in tech. Yeah, and that goes back to what we we're talking to about make knowing if you're ready or not. Um, <laughs> the warning that we give is because um, we don't work with a lot of consumer brands. We're mainly associations. Um, and we, I, don't, I kind of, or personally, I work in that space, but um, it's like this is this is going to be time intensive, and if we're going to do this, can your leadership be ready? Will <laughs> they go through spokesperson training? Um, or, you know, will they take the time to read the key messages and really internalize them? Um, 
because we're not the worst thing in my opinion that you can do with media mm -hmm. is reach out to them and secure interest and then you can't follow through on an interview yeah. Yeah. Um, because then you That's just not only have you done that you've wasted their time and so now they're just gonna be like forget you mm -hmm. um, but um, and, and a lot of people don't realize how much time that is once you get a buy and once you're successful so taking the time after you're getting your ducks in a row of what your website your image looks like um, what your key messages would be for every situation along with your content and then making sure you block time with your leadership to really walk through ahead of time with them before an interview so that you don't have sodomy come up. <laughs> it happens all the time. It, but it also like it turns off the journalist. I'm dealing with that right now where this guy is like absolutely and I'm going back and forth with whoever communications person or his assistant I have no idea. She keeps promising me, and I'm like, okay, I said my deadline's Friday. Yeah. Yeah. You guys have not given me a time for the interview. I'm not hearing from this person. I'm going to move on, right? yeah. you know? And that's, you know, I mean, this person may not care. He doesn't need to, you know, have his name out there or whatever. Yeah. But still, yeah. it's kind of like, well, I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I'm not saying that I'm never going to do anything on your stupid company again. <laughs> yeah. But I'm kind of heading yeah. in that direction. Right. Right. You really right. are, you don't promise something and not deliver. Right. Yeah. Or and be upfront from the get go and be like, we may not be able to. We'll try our best. Yeah. If you don't hear back in a week, I would move on. You know, let us know. Right. So and that's and just at the same time, stupid team. crazy filing times now. Isn't it like 2 p.m. for next day? Uh, yeah. for daily stuff, yeah. We, because what we move, uh, <laughs> we decided it'd be a great idea print our paper in another city uh, uh, so the, yeah now our like sports and daily headlines and it's like oh you know what there's a football game but uh, uh, so now everything gets done but yeah. I work in I work in features actually uh, which is much longer lead time so like my column for next Tuesday is already written I wrote it yesterday so we're working at least a week ahead of time sometimes longer especially for big projects like our restaurant guide or anything that's a guide that's a big you know package like that stuff gets done way 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 in advance so definitely the lead times are for daily news, though, like if something happens, I mean, don't like you know, call us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let us know. There's a fire. Uh, you know, but but most, most, a lot of our focus has shifted to the web. I mean, we still we still write stuff, you know, yeah. on deadline, and we still break news, and but mostly online now. It's like everybody wants to print piece, and you like we work. A lot of my clients are real estate, so I work with Sean Novak a lot, and it's, well, so that means that we put out our stats at. Nine, we have to have an interview done by noon so she can write her story and have it filed by two. I mean, it's just, it's. Um, and that brings up the whole thing of embargoes, which I, I am of two minds about. Oh, Do you want to talk about embargoes? Ooh, yes, <laughs> yes, yes, you're there. <laughs> uh, does everybody know what an embargo is? Uh, it just means you're giving a news outlet news in advance okay. before it's public so they know about it. Yeah. Uh, which is great. Give a time, like when yeah. it Don't go. say anything. It's so like fun. whenever, when like whenever there's a new the iPhone or something, and then you see all these reviews pop up at the same time, it's because they're all under embargo. Everybody mm -hmm. like you have, you cannot publish this until 9 a.m. on Thursday, and everybody has to adhere to that. Sometimes people break embargoes, and we hate those people. Like if one journalist yeah. breaks an embargo and fucks totally. it up for everybody, like we hate that person. <laughs> Are they? I have a question. Are they like blacklisted? Like will yes. Apple be like, yes. well, they yes. cover mine? Yes. That yeah. happens. Yeah, that happened with Month 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 Fest. They, oh really? Somebody broke an embargo about I think the Lauryn Hill thing or really? something. Anyway, happens all the time. So if you're a journalist, the challenge is: Do I hold to this embargo and agree yeah. to this and hold information back from the public, you know, in order to make a deadline? Uh, but the problem I run into all the time is that I'm under the same embargo as everybody else and then you know I don't know if they're all gonna write the same story that I'm gonna write mm -hmm. and if somebody breaks the embargo We're completely screwed So I I try to avoid embargoes if possible unless I know that it's exclusive to us Unless I know that we're the only ones gonna get that information Or we're gonna get it first and they're gonna give it to everybody else like an hour later or something then I, At least I have a little wiggle room this yeah. is so fast. The embargoes yeah. are like a whole. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say to add on to this um, with the you know embargo, there's also the things that are like, hey, we're going to be launching in 2017. Okay, well, in 2017, we'll cover that. You know, <laughs> it's kind of like, thank you for this, but we're not necessarily, you know, we only have 12 issues a year. We only have so much space in each magazine. If something's not quite happening yet, yeah. then yeah, we may not do anything until it gets really closer to when that's going to happen. So that's another thing just to keep in mind. There's too far in advance sometimes. Yeah, be careful not to promise an exclusive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Just, yes. just five people. Yeah. <laughs> yes, don't do that. There's no exclusives in this town. <laughs> uh, let's do one more and then pass it over to y'all. 
Clarissa, you said, y'all touched on a lot of this. I just kind of want to know in general if there's a actual guideline, but what do I need to send to the media? A press release or just an email or send attachments that are small, not too heavy. But is it, it's, I used to do HR and some HR people and recruiters hate when you forthcomingly send rec, um, references, they kind of find it presuming, mm -hmm. and I'm more like, just send me what you have and mm -hmm. let me judge you and then mm -hmm. I'll click back or whatever. <laughs> but, so do you want them sending you every single thought that they have about their event or their thing, or do you want to kind of like? Well, as, so having played both both sides, <laughs> like I, I, I love, this is my favorite question actually to ask um, other people that get into certain publications that I wish, I'm like, how did they get in there? So I will ask, like, what did you do? And some, and I'll, you know, try to pick, and I, I feel like everybody's got a different style of what they accept, but um, yeah, I think that like you were saying Omar, which I didn't know about the statesman until I remember I sent you something and you're like, I erased it, but then I forwarded to my email or something because of the attachment. Yeah. Um, so not everybody knows about that, but I think sharing like a Dropbox link with photos is really helpful because it's a link and it's not a bunch of attachments. Um, I think having a personal, you know, personalized paragraph, it's a blurb. Somebody can skim and not read the whole press release and see if it's like, okay, do I want to go deeper here? Um, and I've also heard, having worked with a lot of designers, um, that you know, having like an inline image or something to capture your capture your eye. Because I've noticed that, at least with certain editors, they will respond more if there's something visually appealing um, versus like just text. Um, but as a recipient, I do like to have everything in one place. And then if I have any questions that I you know maybe like oh I need this or I need that. Um, but, and as a, somebody that sent it out, I've noticed press release are really help, helpful if it's not really like such a big story, but you just kind of, the journalist needs to just condense like the nitty gritty and make sure everything's <coughs> in the press release. My, what I think though is a lot of people think a press release is needed for every single thing, even though it's not. Like maybe there's something that, it's just not a story, so that is just an email. <laughs> it's just like, just want to let you know that we're opening like very soon interest you know like yeah. <laughs> so you don't need to make a huge press release but it, it helps um it just helps in certain circumstances that being said we'd love to hear what the rest of the panel has to say on that um i'll jump in really quick uh so i do a lot of training for publicists and one of the things that i personally truly stand by this is like pitches if possible should be three to five sentences I try to keep my pitches as short as possible, and I always have images. I never attach anything anymore. Um, if you are a consumer-facing brand, you know, food brand, jewelry brand, makeup brand, whatever it is, if you can tell more with images, then those should always be embedded into your pitches um, rather than a lot of text, because I do find that if there's a lot of text, you'll get, your email will probably get deleted a lot more than if you could just have like a good image. Um, and in terms of press releases, in my opinion, I sort of have this love-hate relationship with press releases. I always like to tell my clients that it's probably better to have some kind of like information sheet instead of kind of like Clarissa was saying, if people go press release happy and need like a press release for every little thing. And so I always say it's good to have like a basic information sheet that you can always send the media that just like goes over all the basic things of your company when they ask for more information um, rather than a press release for every single little thing. Yeah, yeah. I don't like to scroll more than like three seconds to be honest, if I'm like, get to the meat, <laughs> yeah. you know, then I'm kind of like, this is taking forever, yeah. I'll come back to it later, and then I forget about it, and by then I probably have deleted it, but yeah, yeah the short, simple, concise information, because it, it does kind of intrigue me, I'm going to try to call you or email you and be like, let's talk more about it, so that's, to me, yeah, I wish Whatever. people knew how like little press releases are read. Yes. No. When I yeah. see a press release, it's I'm small. like, mm -hmm. I definitely don't want to read it because I know it's going to sound stuffy. I'd rather read. Yeah. But that's just. Or, me. or the or the opposite, where they sound like way too trying too hard to be provocative. Or, yeah. Or, you know. I've, but I've yeah. seen a lot of journalists write straight off of the press release too. So. Yeah. Some small publications will run yeah. a press release yeah. verbatim, yeah. and yeah. some websites will run. I always like it when websites have a press room where they like have archived like their oh, press yeah. releases. You know yeah. that's kind of nice. And like um, Rebecca and I work with some brands that like need a press release to like release on the wire because they're more like biotech brands mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. You know, so I get it in those circumstances. But like I don't know. I just like in general, whenever a press release is emailed, it is so much less effective than just like a quick engaging email. It's like. Hey, Omar, I saw you wrote on this last week. I think this would be totally up your alley. Check it out. Yeah. Yeah. 
stacking on what Clarissa said too, yeah, just think about other um, information multimedia that you can provide to kind of package up the story so that if they do have more information, it's there for them. They don't have to go hunt it down. Um, we've worked with Seton Healthcare family a lot and um, we'll have a new program or a new technology and the, and the first thing they say, especially like if it's broadcast, it's especially they'll be like, great, you have a doctor I can talk to and a patient I can talk to. Mm. So we'll have our content and we'll like, okay, we have so-and-so physician queued up. Here's his patient we've already gotten approval with and she knows that she might reach out to her. And here's some B-roll of this event where we tried out this new technology. You've written their story for them. That's assuming that they're interested. But if they are, you've just made their job a lot easier. So think with that kind of a mind of not just my news, but what other information are they gonna run with that news if they run it that I can go ahead and get them in advance. And yeah, knowing who I'm gonna talk to is helpful. <laughs> I've, had, I've had things where like, okay, we want you to talk to the CEO, and then I get on a phone, and there's like five people on the phone, oh and, and, I, and I'm not a mind reader. I don't know who's talking at what time. <laughs> so my notes are like, this guy, maybe, <laughs> and the CEO sounds like it sounds, sounds like this person, and uh, yeah, it's, it's a mess. So yeah, any phone interview, no more than like two people, and make sure they sound different than each other. <laughs> two brothers on an interview, not good. Or they'll be like, we have the CEO available. Oh wait, he's busy, but we have his executive assistant. Oh, Is that yeah. working? You're like, no, that's no. totally different. Yeah. No. yeah, knowing who I'm gonna interview, and then um, just, uh, yeah, like I, I hate surprises in those instances. We're like, oh, by the way, we're gonna have the publicist and this person and this person yeah. on the line or in the room. We've had, with our show, with Statesman Shots, we've had publicists show up which usually we're okay with because it's yes. one person, but we've had people with their whole entourage. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, and that's yeah. always a little weird. Like, you guys, like, are, you guys okay. want to be on the show? Yeah. Like, like, it's fine. I mean, it's really yeah. okay. I tell them to leave, but I don't know. I don't, yeah. I, I think. Wendy I, Davis showed up by herself. You don't need to bring your entourage. Yeah, <laughs> she was amazing. She just called from the lobby. Yeah. Hey. Mm -hmm. We sometimes, this is just a phone interview, we'll like be a third party to listen in, but for the sole reason, because we know how annoying that is, as if like yeah. they. The reporter says, do you have more information? And the spokesperson's like, yeah, yeah, I got some more stats I can send you. And then they don't. You know, it's like, so it's our job to make sure stuff like that gets taken care of. And sometimes the publicist will be in the room taking notes while you're taking yeah. notes. And you're like, can you write this yeah. for me? <laughs> yeah, and we, and we would. Yeah. <laughs> but a lot of times it's because you're asking questions that either they never thought to ask yeah. or, or you're coming at it from a different angle. So they're actually learning, yeah. you know, along mm -hmm. with you some things that maybe they didn't know or that the CEO never bothered to yeah. tell them. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want your money? I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, stop taking Write that down. <laughs> I think that, like, um, so when I freelanced in Chicago, I was writing for Time Out, and, um, and I remember doing, like, you know, so we would frequently get like invited to like a restaurant, and the publicist would be there dining with you, and you're like, this is very, very awkward. Um, or there was one time I was working on a medical story, and the woman was in the room with me, and I felt like her presence, which is, I know her intentions were good, but she was trying to like keep us on time. But for the journalist, it can be very, it can be very stressful. One because you're just trying to, you want to get someone in their element. You want them to feel relaxed without feeling like, okay, this woman's in the corner looking at me. Um, so I am in the personal, I mean, I know everybody has a different style, but I think that publishers should just be like flies on the wall, just yeah. kind of like not even, like not all over the place, not like, they should not be the center of attention, they should just be really like, whatever you need, we're gonna, we're there to help you, not here to monitor you or yeah. like keep you. So that's kind of how I feel, and so with my clients, like, yes, you can talk to them, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna yeah. hold your hand and like, hold all three of our hands while we're talking together, like, I, I, I I respect that they're not going to like intrude on that weird. I don't know. Like, don't you trust your clients? Yeah, to kind of yeah. Know the words sure. off the record. Yeah. 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 come on, yeah. teach your client that or learn how to yeah. say that word. Where it's like, okay, we're not ready to reveal that yet, but you know, I mean, I, just you know. I have an awkward thing I can share that happened today. This part on an awkward story. Yeah. I have yeah. so many good awkward stories. Uh, <laughs> the one that happened today was I got invited to a company that's doing. Some health fitness stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, oh God, two awkward, uh, two awkward things happened. Like the same <laughs> I just remembered. Uh, and so they're doing a thing that like you you play games while you're exercising, and they kind of straps. Uh, you're gonna know who it is. Like a couple weeks ago, right? But uh, so, so these things go on the exercise equipment, and they kind of gamify it. Like you put an iPad and you're playing yeah. games, just fun. They got my ass on the treadmill uh, to do it oh no. and would not let me stop. Like, they're like, oh, no, no, you got to see this next part. No, I'm no. on the treadmill. <laughs> like, I have a speaking engagement today. I'm sweating. And, and they made me keep going on, like this, on this, like, Stairmaster thing. Like this? Uh, I know who it is. Okay, uh, I'll tell you later. Okay. Uh, so, so that happened. That happened. And the other thing, I don't like 
taking lunch appointments or coffee appointments just because it gets into that whole like who's paying for this yeah. Yeah. thing, oh, yeah. which I and I don't want to fill out an expense form. Don't do that to me. <laughs> so, th but this one they insisted like we're having lunch. You're getting lunch. Uh, what do you want? I'm like Dan Dan noodles. I guess uh, it was an it was like a, an Asian food menu. Uh, and I ordered Dan and noodles. So we did our whole interview. The food is sitting there the entire interview. No. And they made me go on a treadmill. Did I mention yeah, the treadmill? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I had to work for my food. And then the interview was over, and then we ate. Wow. So we're, I'm eating there slurping like noodles. big commitment. Slurping noodles, yeah. like, so where, where are you from? You know, like, <laughs> so awkward. I how a lot of times publicists or clients are like, we would like to meet with you for an hour to talk about that stuff. Yeah. yeah. And lunch. Yeah, it better be not? like the most amazing thing. Like we are nominated for a Nobel Prize. Yeah. yeah. You would want to, you know, right. because we're all busy. Yeah. We're all like on deadlines or something, right, and it's right. really a, a, an hour of our time. Yeah. yeah wouldn't, you know? wouldn't anybody offer to buy you lunch? Like you should never have to think, am I buying this? <laughs> like it should be all. No, we, we're not. We're not. But we're not to take we're not supposed to take which I already, I, I feel like I have to pay, owe the money now. Uh, but, and then, the guy, and then the CEO was like, we do this all the time. I'm like, do you now? <laughs> really? That's a good point also that you keep bringing up. Like the gifts. The gifts that, yeah. like, we're not supposed to be accepting gifts either. Yeah. And we get all kinds of stuff. I don't mind the wine, personally. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, there's a limit. <laughs> but, you know, it's kind of, don't really send, drink so much. You know, it's nice to see, like, a model of whatever you're doing yeah. or, yeah. like, see the work. But... <laughs> don't give it to me because that d then puts me in the awkward position of writing something positive. You know. It's yeah. just, so is there a? I I there couldn't hear you guys. Know. You said limit. There is. I can't remember what. Yeah. It's not too big. Three bottles of wine. Three bottles of wine. That's expensive. But buying someone's dinner. I used to work in advertising, and that was the thing with media. They would send them stuff all the time, and then they'd have to give it to everybody. So we all yeah. got these deal tickets every year because they couldn't keep them. Yeah. But if it was below a certain amount, our, yeah. our limit is fifty dollars, and we tend to get. I mean, if it's books or DVDs, we put them in a pile, and they mm -hmm. and they get sold and don't, and the money gets donated yeah. to school. Which is so yeah. cool. Um, I mean, we keep certain things if it's archive. Like if like I'll keep a video game if I know I might come back to it and use it for review later. For work. That's not my job. But it's a nice books. library. Yeah. 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 I mean, a movie so, critic, go, you get the movie tickets to go see movies. I mean, right. you know, yeah. that's part of the deal. Oh, are you re no, yeah. I, you can go. No, 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 you do it. Oh, I was just going to say, as a publicist, I never send, people always ask me, like, oh, can should we send gifts ahead of time? I never send anything unless someone asks for it. If someone asks for a sample, or if someone wants to come in into the restaurant, I never, you know, sometimes just, I used to work, uh, when I was in college, I interned at Vogue, and that's the thing is, people would just get tons and tons of products, and they, they weren't interested in it, so I always wait for journalists to ask for a sample before sending it, because some companies will just send out samples to whomever, and it's a waste of money on yeah. their part, yeah. too. I, I was just going to say, um, I, uh, Sarah, I'm glad you brought up the gift thing, because j so bloggers are sort of ruining, like, not ruining it, but they are changing <laughs> things in the industry, because yeah. a blogger doesn't get, like, their payment is through, like, these gifts or whatever, and so if you pitch, like, a blogger, because you're like, oh, I really want to be on so-and-so, it's going to be like between three hundred and nine hundred dollars, either worth of credit or money, and so that's kind of like that pay to play because nobody's regulating the blog scene, and it's just sort of a different world where, unfortunately, a lot of what you're seeing on Instagram, for example, from these bloggers is gifted to them. Um, so it, it's, it's really, I think it's, um, it's a different way to pitch too because it's almost like if your client's like, I want to be in there, you're like, well, everybody else is giving them things. Can you afford yeah. that? Do you have that budgeted out to give them something? Because they're not gonna do it unless they actually like want to. That, that's their payment. That's the way that they survive as a blogger. Um, and that's one of the reasons why I think it's good to hire a PR firm in some ways because I do, in my mind, I think of bloggers as like a totally different beast than I would traditional media. And so I think that's good to hire a PR firm because they would probably be better at you know figuring out who's a blogger and who's you know a regular media. Because I do think. I mean, we when we work together, we usually write separate, completely separate pitches for the bloggers and yeah. for other people. Me too. Or the like sixteen-year-old makeup guru. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. yeah. making a million, million dollars, dollars a year putting yeah. eyeliner on. I know it's yeah. insane. Yeah. Thinking about that. Let's turn it over to y'all. This yeah. has been so great so far. Thank y'all so much. I'm yeah. learning so much. I see a hand. 
Um, so I studied journalism quite a few years ago, and I just wanted to get your take on this because um, so when I, you know, what I learned in journalism was that you know the, the people that you interview, you would never ever get their approval on a quote or the information. I mean, you know, you, know, you get the information and you write the article and then you publish it. This is not like for their approval, you know, because they, they could go back and change the quotes and all that kind of stuff. Um, but what I've been kind of hearing and seeing lately, and I don't know if it's just for trade publications or, you know, but maybe you can all speak to this, there seems to be more of the, yeah, you know, this person wants my approval on the article, um, so that's fine, I'm gonna write the article and then I'll send it to them for approval. And that just to me was very like, Absolutely no, 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 no way. You know, when I study journalism, I'm just you know wondering if things have changed. Can answer that. Um, we don't send them the articles. You can ask, and we'll say no. It's our policy not to show an article. Um, if it's technical, if it's like science or something, and the expert is explaining it, I might send that part to be like, did I get this right? Um, that doesn't happen too often, but those are the instances where I'm kind of like, I want to make sure that this is correct. We also have fact checkers, and if there's something that is in the quote that is a fact, that might be something also that we would check, but yeah, we are like, no, we aren't gonna show you the article. Um, there was one instance, though, where the fact checker kept on coming back to me and saying, this was a little off, this mm -hmm. was kind of inaccurate. I was, you know, at one point I was kind of like, ew, this writer just, she was yes. new, she was new, I don't know what James, but I was kind of like, I need to, I, talked it over with our publisher, it's like, our editor-in-chief was away, so I was like, I don't know what to do, there was a lot wrong, he's like, send him the article. Mm -hmm. That was one of those instances where it was too many things were kind of like mm -hmm. off. Yeah, right. So I was just like, all right, and he was totally cool, didn't change any quotes, he just wanted to make sure that things were right. Yeah. He got concerned. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'll read back quotes to somebody. Really? Yeah, yeah. I mean, people, that's, I think that's people's biggest fear with if, if reporters that they'll be misquoted. Yeah. So I will offer to read back quotes. I will. I will send you a story um, before it's written. And but see, I, see, I'm, and uh, I'm gonna play devil's advocate a little bit. But maybe it's it's your particular beat. But like for politicians and stuff, you would absolutely not want to read back their quote because if they say something, not I mean, no, not if it's on the public you know. record. I mean, if they, somebody spoke into a microphone in front of a crowd. You know, yeah, that's a fair game. I'm talking about like a personal interview. How often do you feel like they are like? Uh, it's not too often that they. Want to change? No, I, I, I. The last time I somebody asked me to read back their quotes was years ago. I can't even remember yeah, the last time. Okay. And you know, yeah. I think maybe once or twice somebody has asked to read a story, and they and they're always like, "Do you guys do that?" No. Then yeah, at the end of story, they don't argue it, you know, or say okay. or demand it. When I was a fact checker, we always used the phone for fact checking rather than sending them the article. Because like an article is just like so easy and tempting to like get in there yeah. and start like yeah. making changes yeah. like the amazing CEO <laughs> innovator yeah. that, you know, yeah. like whereas like on the phone you can just kind of like go down the article and be like okay so like your product launch is happening in April right okay you said basically that like it was a team of four collaborators okay you know so it you can like Re reading the article just written. Kind of yeah, exactly, like you're literally kind of presenting the facts yeah. for verification. You know what, that brings up so. an interesting thing though. With our podcast, we will send someone the audio before we publish it. Okay. Yeah. Which which points to why the podcast I feel is different than, than, than journalism, yeah. in that it's a much more personal thing, it's a very long form interview, someone has a lot more opportunity to say something really dumb and, and not always, mean it. Has anyone ever asked no, to no, change it? No one's ever, someone has asked, uh, in fact, a person in PR <laughs> asked us, uh, who was a guest asked to, to fix something that was incorrect, and that's that's very different from yeah. I don't sound good. Can you fix yeah. this? Or I don't yeah. want to be in this. Uh, it was a, a factual error where they misspoke and said, "Is there a way to edit that out?" Because I don't want people to get the wrong date on this yeah. event, yeah. which is yeah. fun, which totally understandable. But yeah, the podcast is much more personal, I think, and we're bringing people on as a guest to our house. Yeah, and it feels yeah. more like a fun conversation than journalism. And you want yeah. you know the off the cuff yeah. remarks are like. Fun ones. Right. Yeah, yeah, we will send them an MP3 yeah. like a day or two before that it goes out, just so they can hear it, and also to, like just for audio, you know, to, if they spot any audio glitches or anything that sounds weird that we need to fix, mm -hmm. you know, post wise. Mm -hmm. Great. Question. Uh, I have another one. <laughs> Go nuts. Um, so just to speak to um, how sort of the media landscape has changed, because again, you know, when I studied it was 
the whole social media scene had not erupted at that point. So, um, so could you speak to like kind of you know when you write an article and how it can get picked up from different places and then how you track that like if you're as publicist um, and you know kind of I know there's like media and monitoring sites and stuff like that, but <coughs> could you just kind of speak to to that kind yeah, of the whole thing layer that there. I mean, the only situation where I really find that happening is when you do put it on like a PR wire, because a lot of the times, especially, you know, for these online sites, I mean, they want different content than their competitors, so <coughs> it's very rare where people will use the same article. I mean, the only time I really, I guess, see that is when people post their press release to something like PR Newswire, and then it kind of gets picked up and I don't know. Like Market Watch or something. Yeah, money I don't airports, actually really yeah. see people repurposing. In terms of like strict editorial, I find that it's sort of the opposite. People try their best not to take something that someone else has used. Um, and there's clients that just want the links. Like, so they'll just post their press releases on these wires that get, you know, I guess syndicated or whatever along bunches of different publications, and that's all they really care about. They don't really care about a story, they just want to see lots of links. Because I think it, Helps with SEO, if I'm not it mistaken. Does. So, um, but in terms of editorial, I don't really see people using the same article. I what I think in what's happening now that I I have noticed is with the rise of bloggers, especially in niche industries. You know, they're chewing on this original news, which is great because yeah. it can help amplify it. So there was something that was published in like Austin 360, and um, and a couple of like drink blogs like repurpose the content but put their own spin on it. But like was like check out this recipe that was there. So it's all like kind of link juice, which I think is is more powerful these days. Like with the help of the bloggers, but they're not like really breaking the news. They're just kind of commenting on it, mm -hmm. which yeah. but still like at least if they link back. D Daniel, do you know anything about the measurements that you guys use for your clients? Or? Um, we have social. We have traditional media monitoring tools that we use, and then we have a social media monitoring one as well. Um, what what are they? Uh, we use we use Meltwater, we use Cisions for, and we use Nuvi for our social media side. Meltwater and Cisions being the traditional. Um, Google Alerts used to be helpful, and now they're most they're the most unhelpful thing in the world. Um, they send you about one of every clip I think that you're mentioning. Um, but honestly, we just do the most effective thing is just to do searching. Um, uh, social media is a little bit easier to track um, impressions and shares and, um, uh, and impact, things like that. But um, for traditional media, we still just kind of go and search it ourselves. Yes. Another question. If there is almost like a recommendation for like first line of attempt to get media coverage for, like if it's like an event or you know, human interest story or you know, editorial or something, is there a recommendation or is it? Have really a celebrity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it when you use Tiss the Season. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like um, Austin based. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you have that in the subject line, mm -hmm. that, you know, helps me. A good email subject line. A good, a email, good email subject, subject line. line. Yeah. yeah. Like, and, okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, one thing that I always say is like, just say what you're asking for. One of the yeah. biggest things that I, hate when I see other publicists do this is try to like be cutesy and so sometimes I go to UT and speak in their PR classes and I always say like if you're in creative writing PR is probably not the career for you because I always try to make my pitches sound authoritative and say I have you know a local guest for this show or I have a local story idea that's always the first sentence of all my pitches is like I have a story idea I have a guest idea I have a local story idea um, because I feel like it's it's kind of stupid to just like start with something super cutesy and I don't know, it's just a waste of time. So yeah. I always try to sound authoritative in my first sentence and my subject line, and usually those are pretty much the same thing. Yeah, yeah and avoid jargon. I mean, I, you can tell when a PR person has given up <laughs> uh, and, and is just kind of repeating what the CEO told, told them or what somebody in their product division told because it, it's just all technical garbage. And I mean, I have, I have read press releases that I are not in English. Like, I have read, I tried to read them, and they're, I can't can make heads or tails of them. So, like right clearly. I mean, that's that's the best okay. advice I can give. Yeah. yeah, just get to the point and say, I have this. It's it's worth your time because of this. I can add this, this, and this to help if you're interested in covering the end. Yeah. Yeah. Which you're leveraging your synergies for verticals. Like. Yeah. Oh. I would delete you. Yeah. How it's how you sell anything. Like right. no yeah. one wants to buy any. No one wants to hire you for a job. No one wants to buy your product. No one wants to read your email and place you in their. Yeah. Yeah. If you were an idiot. 
Right. <laughs> it's a good rule of thumb. I'm trying. I'm like halfway through the year, and I don't think I've used Synergy yet. I'm like, yes. <laughs> try not to. Uh -huh. And something else, sorry, just kind of going off what Omar said, and I always think it's funny, because when you're obviously working directly with clients, they think everything they've done and accomplished is really important. And so another good reason to maybe hire a PR firm um, is you can look at that objectively. But one thing that drives me crazy is when people list like all their industry awards. Mm -hmm. I mean, those aren't important to anyone really. Like if you're pitching, you know, mainstream media, unless it's something that's you know really well nationally known, you don't need to list like every single me industry award that you've ever received because like people don't really know about them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if your CEO should be on LinkedIn. I mean, bottom line. Yeah. If I, if I do yeah. a search for your CEO and they're not on LinkedIn, I'm gonna be like. That's that's fishy. That's <laughs> really fun. I, it was, uh, were, <laughs> I'm gonna get my my, yeah. my boss is in trouble. We have this coupon lady that comes and talks to the statesman uh -huh. all the time. Oh yeah. And I, I I'm gonna get to the bottom of this at some point, but uh, they, we invite her like every six months and she to, to do a couponing expert thing. Mm -hmm. And I start I was gonna do a story about couponing, and I'm like, oh maybe I can talk to that lady. She's an expert. So I started looking her up online. <laughs> No Facebook, no website, no LinkedIn. I'm like, this lady is Kaiser Sose. Yeah. Like, this lady does not exist. And I tried to yeah. like, tell my boss, it's like, hey, that lady we have coming to this thing. Like, Shady. I can't even find her online, and yeah. nothing happened. So, I don't know. It, and it's that's how you prove someone's not messy these days. That's yeah. the like, the, that's the way yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I think Which she's stealing might be a great person. <laughs> I think something's up. Yeah. I did this music panel, and afterwards, this musician came up to me, and she gave me her CD. And I was like, thank you. And then I looked at it. It didn't have her name on it. Oh it didn't gosh. have no. any contact information. And I stopped her and Maybe was like. Maybe I was a stalker. Well, I was I like. I made this for you. Yeah. 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 She, she, did, she did make cupcakes also for the panel. I was like. Oh, wait, that's oh you can't do that. Do you know her? Okay. No. I don't, nobody knows her. She's that's like, my not mother. Your aunt. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, I stopped her and I was like, you know, all you need to do is just cut off sheet paper and slip it in there. And she's like, oh, I don't have the website. Facebook, Facebook. Yeah. You need it's a way for people to contact website. you, yeah. and you need to make it easy for it's us. Easy. Right. This yeah. better be the most amazing CD for me to track you down. Right. Otherwise, yeah. so you know, into the free bin that went. Yeah, <laughs> and it's really expensive to make a website now. I mean, Squarespace is so easy. You just like yeah. pull everything in, and you can at least just have like contact me here or something. Yeah. All right, let's do one more. It's about time check. It's about 4.06. I'm going to stick to my hour-ish. Any last question? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Did you find this helpful? Oh. Yes. <laughs>